TNA Wrestling crossed the line again. The fallout from Slammiversary on Impact. Slammiversary, what a show uh, TNA put on just this past weekend at Montreal. It was a fantastic uh, show. Bell to bell, title changes, everything. And the landscape of Impact has really changed over that course of the week. The new TNA world champion, Nick Nemeth, new tag team champions, in Bullet Club ABC, and of course, a new X Division champion in Speedball Mike Bailey. This week's TNA has a great fallout show. Um, and Nick Nemeth, the man that won the TNA Heavyweight Championship, uh, come out to the crowd in Montreal. Crowd chanting, You deserve it, you know, and he was how he was going to be, you know, is how, sorry, how it's still surreal to him that he is the TNA heavyweight champion. And he said he'll fight anybody at any time, at any place, at any night. He will he will fight anyone for the uh, TNA championship. And funnily enough, the guy in particular that cut him off believes that he was part of the biggest screw job uh, in, in wrestling. Uh, not, not only that, just the biggest screw job in wrestling. And that man was Mustafa Ali. If you remember at Slammiversary, Mustafa Ali called El Hebner down to ringside as he put Speedball Bailey in the sharpshooter. Uh, but El Hebner didn't ring the bell. And if you remember, he refused to do that. And of course, Ali tapped out to the, to the sharpshooter later on in the night. So he believes that he was a part of the biggest um, screw job in wrestling. And it seems to be that basically... Nick Nemeth and Mustafa Ali will be going against each other next week on TNA Impact. Uh, he Nick Nemeth wanted to do it tonight. Ali did not. Uh, Nick ended up throwing him over the top rope anyway. And Campaign Singh got on a, a, a receiving end, shall we say, uh, of a super kick. Um, which actually was quite funny uh, itself. But next week's impact already shaping up. We haven't even started really this week, but next week's impact, Nick Nemeth, Ali, championship match. Can Ali dethrone Nick Nemeth over a, only a week removed from him winning uh, the TNA championship? we got to wait until next week, though, which is really, really bad. You know, that's bad. That is bad. That's good and bad. I wanted it tonight. But funnily enough, another one that was leeching for the title shot was Frankie Kazarian. Uh, Kazarian backstage with, with Nick Nemeth and basically saying he screwed him out of the title. And Nemeth says, look, he's a fighting champion, but he needs to get to the back of the line. Kazarian, not very happy. Um, but he, Kazarian will get a shot at Nemeth. Just Ryan Nemeth, Nick Nemeth's brother, uh, next week on Impact. Look at that. Next week on Impact. This is already before we've had the first match of the night, we've got two massive matches made for next week on TNA. Both Neme brothers in action, uh, Ryan against Kazarian and Nick against Mustafa Ali. Next week's impact already shaping up to be great. But uh, finally this week, um, we get to a match and uh, Steve Macklin, the guy we had on the show, thank you to the two and a half thousand people that have tuned in uh, to that interview and the two and a half thousand that tuned in to Campaign Singh. Amazing numbers for us. Thank you so much uh, as well for that. Um, quite amazingly that Steve Macklin does not like um, Canada, the Canadian crowd singing, no, 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 hey, 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 goodbye. He responded, no, 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 hey, 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 kiss my ass, <laughs> which was uh, quite uh, quite funny. Um, him and Cody Dean actually had a really good match, to be fair. Um, it, it was quite an interesting one. Cody Dean... Uh, we hadn't seen a lot of recently. There was, you know, he was in bit, he was in, been in fits and spurts of TNA a little bit, but we haven't actually seen a, a lot of him uh, recently. Uh, and this match itself was really, really good. And Macklin for me uh, is a guy that you know, not just because he's on um, been on the show, but in general, he is pound for pound one of the hardest hitters and one of the best um, in TNA. To be quite honest with you, I was glad that he was in the six way. I know he got eliminated first, but um, really, really good to see Macklin up there again. He does defeat Cody Dina with a, with the KIA, which is a really good... You know, I really enjoyed it, um, seeing uh, Macklin in action. Uh, Cody Dina is definitely one that goes under the radar a little bit. People may not know 
you know, people may not think a lot of him or he may not get the attention that perhaps the others do. But Cody Dina is no slouch in TNA, that's for sure. Um, definitely one to look out for as we roll through, head to Bound for Glory. We still, know, but we still know where Bound for Glory in October is going to be yet. Could be Scotland. Could it be Glasgow? Could it be London? We know a lot of wrestling events have been spoken about becoming over here. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen the breaking news this morning about uh, WrestleMania. But um, maybe Bound for Glory could steal a march on uh, on WrestleMania and come over here in, in the UK. Um, we, de we do see, sorry, a bit of uh, Sammy Callahan. Now, he's going to take on AJ Francis. Uh, tonight which is quite interesting and don't forget just as a slight side you obviously watch tna impact on the tna plus app uh, axs tv over in the states to zone over here in the uk but also tune in to nxt this coming tuesday for the joe hendry concert you thought rock con the, the rock concerts were good wait until you see joe's henry's concert uh on the, on the nxt's great american bash this coming uh, Tuesday. But anyway, uh, AJ Francis and Sammy Callahan. This is interesting because, like, these two itself, like, what I see is Callahan's just come back, great veteran, uh, great guy to hang around. AJ Francis, we've waxed lyrical about this guy because it's the way in which he's just evolving in front of our eyes and he's doing so much good stuff. He beats, actually, Sammy Callahan with the down payment. Uh, in this match there was a bit of a distraction from Rich Swan, as you could imagine first class up to their usual shenanigans but AJ Francis has just been you know he's come on leaps and bounds since he's on again I make the point of yes with WWE you've got the road agents you've got the people at the back you've got everybody that you need you know there but it's not as good as being front and center on a stage in that ring week in, week out with people like Sammy Callahan, who can take you up that level as well. Uh, and, you know, kudos to Sammy Callahan for, for, for this match as well with AJ Francis, but eight, but for me, like one of the most, two of the most improved people in wrestling, Dana Brooke, uh, you know, Ash by Legends and, and AJ Francis, because they're here, they're on every week and they're constantly involving themselves in front of our eyes. Obviously, AJ Francis has also been on NWA and, and, and whatnot, but it's so imperative that these people, you know, get better and evolve and improve their skills. And at TNA, when they're getting the opportunity, Mac Macklin's another prime example of this, where, you know, Macklin was in WWE, he was in NXT. Um, he got released, he went to TNA, and he exploded on TNA. And you, you showed how you can, you know, how, how his character is, how good he is at doing what he does, because you don't always get the opportunities uh, like that WWE. And that's not because, you know, WWE don't give you those opportunities. It's just because things, you know, when AJ Francis come back to SmackDown, it was bloodline heavy, and you're not going to get that opportunity that perhaps they may have got previous to the bloodline stuff going on but AJ Francis uh, defeats Sammy Callahan and a good win obviously oh yeah I forgot to mention when I was talking about new champions new digital media champion PCO don't let's not forget that uh, PCO uh, wins the digital media championship from AJ Francis uh, at slam anniversary so AJ Francis needs to set his sight on some gold um someone else has been rather cryptic recently and tried to kill somebody <laughs> Uh, um, slam anniversary being Rosemary. She has the knife, funnily enough, that she was wielding uh, over the weekend. Um, she's uh, she's a it was a really gothic starving it. I just wonder the direction that they're heading with Rosemary. Obviously, the decay was there. They were knockouts tag champions. She seems to be going her own way now, in her own direction, and I'm really interested to see what they're going to do with Rosemary and what is next from her. Um, she's such a cool, she's such a great talent. She's again, someone that's been around, been on the show. She's been around the TNA for so long. And it's another one that like evolves and she seems to be evolving into something new. Uh, and I'm really interested to see where or who her radar is on right now, shall we say on TNA. I'm really looking forward to seeing what's next from her. So yeah, Rosemary character evolving, knife wielding. <laughs> Wouldn't want to be anywhere uh, near that for sure. Um, we mentioned earlier, uh, Ash by Allegiance is one of the most uh, improved wrestlers that we've seen uh, so far this year. Now she was in mixed tag team action uh, 
teeming with the impressive Hammerstone. Uh, Hammerstone lost to Eric Young on the pre-show of Slammiversary. Match didn't get too long, to be fair. Um, and it was the Hammerstone and Ash versus Eric Young and Jordan Grace. This was a really good one. Hammerstone is just so impressive. I, I really want to see hammerstone weekly on on tna he has got so much to offer uh tna wrestling if they can find something to, you know find a way to get him on the show week in week out it, it is essential that hammerstone is utilizing tna so so good so so talented strong he's got good he's even got some good quickness about him hard hitting there's so much to like about him. And I really hope that we see more of Hammerstone in TNA wrestling uh, this for the remainder of the year, if possible. It, uh, really, really good. Eric Young, the wily veteran, of course. Jordan Grace, the unstoppable champion. Ash by elegance keeps improving. And funnily enough, Rosemary, because uh, <laughs> if you remember... Uh, Slam anniversary. Um, Rosemary showed up with the knife. The Iceman at ringside, the concierge of uh, Ash by Elegance, was uh, worried at all moments that Rosemary was going to show up with the knife and he was constantly uh, worried about it. You could see throughout the whole match. It was quite, it was quite funny. Um, but really, really good uh, back and forth uh, mixed tag on this one. And as Ash hits the Meteora from the apron... Hammerstone makes Eric Young tap to the torture rack. And I'm really um, impressed by this because, again, Hammerstone, so good. Ash really improving. These these four uh, wrestlers totally, totally showed what they can do in this match. And, and again, I want to see more Hammerstone. I, I still don't think there's anyone on the TNA roster at the moment that can match Jordan Grace uh, and can take that knockouts title away. Um it's really interesting to see where that's going and who's going to be next. Even will Ash get a rematch? You know, they did, they have won this one. So does that mean a, a rematch is on the cards? Who knows? But really, really solid mixed tag match. Really enjoyable. Hammerstone just needs to be on TNA every week. It is so, so good. Um, now, if you remember, and for those of you that watch Slammiversary, you'll remember Joe Hendry eliminates Moose with a standing ovation. And literally in seconds after that, Josh Alexander kicks Eric, uh, kicks uh, Hendry in a nuts, hits the C4 spike and pins him, eliminates him uh, from the match. Um, and it was due to make uh, an explanation. Uh, the fans were absolutely hated him. Uh, calling him, you suck. You know, he said that, you know, he's a proud Canadian and all this, but they just didn't like him. And um, he said that, you know, you want an explanation. Nah, nah, <laughs> he wasn't going to give it. Drops the mic and, and literally walks out. So we didn't get an explanation from uh, Josh as to why. I mean, to be honest, like all I would say about it is it doesn't, it doesn't really need to explain anything. It was a six-man elimination match. I thought, yes, he did kick him in the balls. But, you know, I, I just think, like, it really... Yeah, he doesn't need to explain himself. It was a six-man elimination match. It's not like he was on Joe Hendry's team. He just took an opportunity. And yeah, all right, he took the... You can argue that he took a controversial way of doing it, but he done his job. I don't know. I don't know what the bad ones think. I don't know why people are so annoyed about it. I, I know what, there's a lot of people that are annoyed that TNA didn't pull the trigger on on uh, uh, Joe Hendry. And that's a separate, separate story. Um, you know, there has been a lot of um criticism you know joe henry is the most over person going and you know they should have he should, they should have pulled the trigger he should have won the title and, and, and i made a point in saying that perhaps the chase for joe henry is what they're working towards they don't forget everything's a story right so as one story starts one begins and, and one story ends one story begins with, with joe henry you you could be on this sort of you know cody rose type story where he was having the opportunity. He lost the opportunity, a bit like Cody did last year at WrestleMania. And perhaps it goes to Bound for Glory or it goes further down the line. And then Joe Hendry wins the TNA championship. That may be the end goal. But it's I think with TNA, it's kind of capitalizing when the time is right. Maybe they don't quite think the time is right now just because he's only just started. 
maybe getting him a bit more comfortable down in NXT. He did say that he would be on uh, NXT for a while. So it may just be the case of, hey, look, we uh, want to get him embedded in that WWE scenario a bit longer before giving him the title, and then he'll get the title and perhaps then defend it on both shows. Who knows? I, you know, look, I can understand people's frustration with it. It's the same with LA Knight on WWE. They've not pulled the trigger. They've not pulled the trigger. Why, why, why? Um, but I think it's just like, give it some time with this. It is... Although it's been like a month or two or three with Joe Hendry being so popular, it's like, hold on, let's pump the brakes a minute and then let's do it. There will come a time, and, and, and this is exactly what I've been saying with LA Knight and the WWE, there will come a time when it is now or never for Joe Hendry. But I think we're a little bit away from that just yet, just because he's embedded in WWE. He's getting the reactions there. Give it some more time. If by the end of the year... And this is, you know, the end of the year is literally, what, five months away now? Literally Boxing Day in five months to the day. Um, if he's not championed by the end of the year, I would then class it as perhaps now or never. Unless something happens in the meantime, if he maybe keeps losing or, you know, the momentum kills and if he, or maybe he has more title shots and loses and loses, then that momentum starts to dwell. And then there's an argument of saying, look, if you're going to do it, you've got to do it. But yeah, I'd say give it till the end of the year and then we'll have another conversation uh, with Joe Hendry. But look, uh, uh, Josh Alexander did pretend to come back to the ring uh, and then just, he just then walked back out. So um, yeah, it didn't uh, didn't quite happen. But well, something that is happening next week, I think, or maybe not next week, uh, but something that's happening very, very soon. Uh, it was the Rascals, Wesley, uh, Trey Miguel and Zachary Wentz, um, are looking at going after Speedball Bailey at Trent Seven, and uh, they were talking about potentially a six-man match. Uh, yeah, there is a potential six-man match, and uh, they've shook hands with uh, Trent Seven and Mike Bailey. But there will be a mystery partner for uh, Bailey and Trent, and you know, Trent Eight, maybe I don't, I don't know. That match, when it happens, and whoever that mystery partner is, is going to be. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do here with that. I personally think that I don't know who that mystery partner is going to be. Could be someone from NXT. You know, where's Lee's on NXT? Are they going to add an NXT member to Speedball's team? It opens up the realms of possibilities here. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with this. That match itself should be a fantastic match, even with before you add the mystery person in. The other two involved. Well, the other five involved are great wrestlers, high flying, exciting. Trent Seven, the veteran, can go. He can be a lucha if he wants. Not a very successful lucha, but you don't tell him I said that. Um, but he can be very good. You know, there is so much potential there with that match, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. I look forward to seeing who it is. We're gonna have to wait though. It's not next week, uh, but we'll have to wait to see what happens. But I'm waiting with eagerness because TNA have delivered a lot of good surprises. With this NXT crossover, it did with a lot of good surprises himself. I mean, if you look now at wrestlers that are potentially available to come in to TNA, and you know, there's lots of free agents out there anyway, but the most recent set of releases from WWE are now ready to go and ready to, you know, potentially show up uh, at Impact Wrestling. So, you know, Shelton Benjamin, I would say the Maharaja, but I don't, I don't know if he would be a heel or a face. Maybe he could align with Ali. I don't know. Uh, I mean, there's plenty. Of availability out there at TNA, but they could just do an NXT, uh, uh bring in an NXT wrestler uh to go against them and join Speedball and Trent. But we'll wait and see. Uh look, main event time on this. Matt Hardy and the new tag team champions, Bullet Club ABC, are taking on uh Johnny Dango Curtis, Eddie Edwards, and Brian Myers at a system. Now, a good backstory to this. Obviously, Dango Curtis was the one that's helped the system take out Jeff, put Jeff on the shelf. Uh, Matt Hardy did beat Dango uh, as a bit of revenge. Uh, that was during the uh, tag team title match they had last week on Impact. Matt Hardy got a, a measure of revenge on Johnny Dango Curtis at Slammiversary uh, in the opener of, of that pay-per-view. Uh, and Bullet Club ABC obviously took the titles away uh, for from the system interesting enough moose wasn't out with the system on this i'm, I'm quite interested to see 
uh, what happens on that. I'm not quite sure um, at that point. Well, he wasn't out at that point anyway. Let's just say that. Um, there was a one point at all six men are winning. And again, these six are just so, you know, Matt Hardy is looking to re, you know, reignite that career a little bit in TNA. You know, I know him and Jeff said they got sights set on perhaps the NXT tag titles as well when Jeff is healed up. But Matt is, you know, such a great person to be around by the sounds of it. TNA he seems to be enjoying himself. Um, they had a big fun in this match, really big fun in, in this. Um, then there was the bit Moose did appear and they went to take them out. But Joe Hendry hits the ring. He took out Moose. Matt Hardy hits the twist of fate on JDC. Chris Bay hits the top rope flog splash for the victory. And they all uh, pose to end uh, what was a fun episode of Impact. These four, though, are brilliant. I'm really looking forward uh, with ABC as a tag title again. I'm, you know, they're such a great tag team. Um, I'll. Bullet Club ABC. They've been so it was so good to see them on the same page. Um, Matt Hardy with them as well. Jeff will be back soon. The system is still together, albeit not winning now. So it'd be interesting with that to see what happens in the next few weeks, whether they stay on the same page. But another defeat for the system. Now let's talk next week. We already gave you two big matches for next week. But next week we have a wedding on TNA. Yes. Do weddings ever go well on wrestling, unless your name's Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth? We're about to find out, because next week there is going to be a wedding of PCO and Steph Delanda. Steph Delanda asked PCO to marry her after Slammiversary. He said, we, we get to it next week. She's going to be Mrs. PCO. Also on the show, Jody Threat versus Masha Slamovich. That'll be a good one-on-one -on -one knockouts encounter. We're going to get the in-ring return of Rosemary. So we'll find out where that character is going next week. That's going to be very, very interesting. Ryan Nemeth from Frankie Kazarian, as well as the TNA World Heavyweight Championship match between new champion Nick Nemeth and Mustafa Ali. And do not forget, TNA fans, you can watch TNA on, stream it on the TNA Plus app like me, or watch it on AXS TV in America, the zone over here in the UK. And also a big thanks to TNA for all the interviews given to us so far. We are at, we've been absolutely uh, thrilled with every single one of them that we've done with Jake something, with the system, with Decay, uh, with who was the brief moment with Macklin. How can I forget Macklin? Uh, you know they were they've been so good. So we really do thank you, everyone involved in, in making that possible for us. It's really helped grow our audience uh, and put more eyes on us so again really big thank you for that and we look forward uh, to working still working with you guys uh, in the future uh, and certainly as we roll on to the next pay-per-view so please make sure you're watching tna watch all the interviews on this channel as well well keep following us at htt buckle on twitter or x and hitting the turnbuckle podcast on all other social media platforms we'll be back with some more reviews smackdown Collision, Royal Rampage. Just keep it locked. You will know uh, the Devil on My Shoulder review for uh, uh, Progress Wrestling where we're heading on Sunday. Uh, but please keep a look out on our channels for everything going on. Don't forget to go and get your tickets to Ignite Wrestling's Aftermath at 96 Shenley Road. Uh, go to Eventbrite, type in Ignite Wrestling Aftermath. You'll get your tickets there to see CPF return. I have an idea for CPF uh, and what they want to do, what we do with them. At Ignite Wrestling. Uh, obviously, Colin Mills one on one, Tommy Kyle for the Ignite Championship. Do not forget that. And the Tur Turnbuckle Championship will also be defended on that show. And Charles Crowley returns to Shenley Road as well. So get your tickets 96 Event Bright. Go to the app, type in Ignite Aftermath and get your tickets now. But this has been the TNA review on the Hidden Turnbuckle podcast. I've been your host, Adam Cousins. And until next time, everybody. Buckle down, stay safe, and cross that line with TNA.